Without question, the Battle of Endor was an unmitigated disaster for the Galactic Empire. Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader were dead, the second Death Star was destroyed, and its fleet was decimated, led by the loss of the Super Star Destroyer, the Executor, and numerous other Star Destroyers and communications vessels. But even with these losses, an important opportunity still remained for the Imperials, one that would have given the Empire the best chance to prevent the rise of the New Republic and the complete fragmentation of the Empire after Endor. This opportunity was defined by a massive Imperial counterattack at Endor in the immediate aftermath of the death of Palpatine, and was recognized by Captain Galad Pelion, the Imperial captain of the Star Destroyer Chimera, and the eventual right-hand man to Thrawn when the Grand Admiral returned to the known galaxy roughly four years after Endor. Pelion recognized that while the rebels celebrated their victory at Endor, not all was lost for the Empire, not by a long shot. For Pelion, the structure of the Empire remained largely untouched by the Rebel victory. But more importantly, Pelion realized that the Rebels had largely exhausted their resources in its attack on the Death Star, leaving the Rebellion unable to take advantage of its victory through further immediate military endeavors. Pelion was exactly right. To prevent the Empire from successfully completing its second Death Star, the Rebellion threw everything it had at the battle station, assembling its largest armada ever to confront Palpatine and his superweapon. And despite the Rebel victory, 75% of its capital ships were rendered inoperable after Endor, needing significant repairs. Pelion wanted to capitalize on this opportunity as soon as possible. But in the Battle of Endor's immediate aftermath, Pelion, who was now the commander of the Chimera after the death of Admiral Strage in the battle, also had to recognize a harsh truth about his own Imperial forces. Death Squadron, which underpinned the Imperial fleet at Endor, and which would be the most useful fleet for any type of immediate counterattack, also sustained serious losses. Both the flagship the Executor and the second-in-command battlecruiser, the Pride of Talandia, were destroyed, along with 15 of the squadron's 33 Star Destroyers. Because Death Squadron and the rest of the Imperial fleet at Endor was clearly in disarray from its unexpected loss, Pelion ordered the remaining Imperial forces to retreat to the planet of Anaj. The two-day journey changed nothing for Pelion. He wanted to fight, believing the Rebellion could still be crushed before the galaxy even knew about the death of the Emperor. However, Pelion's window was quickly closing, and even worse, his decision-making capabilities were becoming more and more out of his hands, falling prey to thinking that would ultimately fragment the Empire. At a Council of War meeting that convened during the two-day trip, Pelion was adamant Death Squadron should return to Endor immediately to confront the Rebellion. But as was made clear to Pelion by Admiral Blitzer Harsk, the captain wasn't in command of Death Squadron, as that task fell to the ranking Admiral, Admiral Adai Pritik. Pelion wasn't concerned about personally leading Death Squadron back to Endor, so long as someone did it. But unfortunately for the Imperial Captain, Admiral Pritik proved to be completely indecisive at the convened War Council. Pritik's inability to make a decision resulted in the leading officers still attached to Death Squadron to retreat from any attempts to counterattack at Endor. Harsk would take his remaining five Star Destroyers and single battlecruiser into the Galactic Deep Core until a chain of command was re-established, while two additional captains would retreat to their home sector to wait for further orders. The collapse of the Council of War and Pritik's lack of leadership resulted in Death Squadron being left with only 12 remaining Star Destroyers. While this was a formidable force, Pritik knew it wouldn't guarantee victory against the Rebellion. Therefore, instead of leading a counterattack on the rebels at Endor, Admiral Pritik ordered a further withdrawal of the remaining forces to the interim planet of Yagdul. Pelion was stunned, and the missed opportunity to capitalize on the events following the Battle of Endor would forever torment the Imperial Captain. The failure to take advantage of Pelion's plan would cost the Empire everything, representing a sign of what was to come for the Imperial Remnant and the eventual rise of the New Republic. The choice not to crush the remaining rebels at Endor would ultimately result in the complete fragmentation of the Empire, with Palpatine's Grand Vizier and head of the ruling council, Sate Pestage, focusing solely on the Core Worlds. Admirals Harsk, Dremel, Zinj, and Teradoc declared themselves as warlords to focus solely on their own ambitions and holdings, while Grand Moff Artis Kane removed himself completely from the Empire, focusing solely on the survival of his Pentastar alignment within the New Territories. On the other hand, the Rebellion would utilize ingenious diplomatic maneuvers to further dismantle the Empire and consolidate its own power. After sending envoys to thousands of worlds, the New Republic coalition grew exponentially following Endor. 
and by allowing new Republic member sectors to retain command of their local forces, as opposed to the forced nationalization of the Empire, Mon Mothma brought even more Starfleets and member worlds to confront the struggling Empire. As predicted by Pelion, the Rebellion's small flicker of flame that remained after Endor erupted into a wildfire that pushed the remaining Imperial forces to the brink of collapse practically everywhere in the galaxy. The missed opportunity following Endor to counterattack was one that eventually sealed the fate of the Empire and allowed for the rise of the New Republic. So there we have it, how the Empire missed its opportunity to crush the Rebellion after Endor. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... For finding better allies.